Is it realistic to wonder if material for nuclear, chemical, and biological weapons, weapons of mass destruction, to use the official term, be transported through, or in worst case circumstances, actually be used in Belize? In an unpredictable world, the answer to that drives local enforcement, according to Acting Comptroller of Customs and Excise Colin Griffith, to borrow from the Boy Scouts and always be prepared. With all location, we're strategically located where and we have challenges in respect to resources. So by these um, bad individuals, Belize is viewed as a soft target, and we must prepare ourselves. And so we appreciate the assistance from the United States in getting our officers prepared. We, we, uh, we embrace the military concept that we must prepare for worst case scenario. So while it may appear that it has not happened. It could also be that it did happen and we were not able to recognize it. So we are, we are, we are appreciative of this training that we will be able to, if it is happening, find it and then put control measures in place so as not to have Belize be a transit point for these type of goods. Gregory Bates, Regional Advisor for the Export Control and Related Border Security Program, says that this equipment, valued at just under 90,000 Belize dollars, will increase Belize's inspection capacity and allow for the identification of radioisotopes and other forms of radiation. The challenge with weapons of mass destruction is the proliferation globally and our efforts by the global community to prevent the proliferation into uh, unsavory characters or countries that, that are trying to develop uh, military you know, grade chemical, biological, or, or nuclear radiological programs. It also is an issue of terrorism when we have uh, organizations such as ISIS and Al-Qaeda who, who have publicly announced their intent to develop and create um, uh, radiological dirty bombs, chemical weapons, and we've seen use of that. So part of the EXPIS program is to help prevent that by, number one, by preventing the, the illicit transfer of legitimate equipment for the private sector into the hands of individuals that can use that same equipment to create chemical, biological, or radiological and nuclear programs. That's the first part there. And to do that is we, we have to have equipment and we have to have training and we have to have commitment by government. So we work with governments on legislative development, regulatory development to ensure that they are uh, able uh, to implement UN Security Council Resolution 1540. Uh, as well as ensure that, that officers have the training uh, to detect, to recognize, uh, and to interdict or intercept illicit transfers. U.S. Interim Charge de Affairs, Adrienne Galanek, considers the princely sum spent by her country in Belize through the Central American Regional Security Initiative well spent. Safety from border to border, she says, will translate to safer communities. As you know, security is one of our embassy's primary areas of partnership with the government and people of Belize. Since 2008, can anyone guess how much the U.S. government has committed to citizen security initiatives in Belize under the Central America Regional Security Initiative, or CARSI? What do you think? A million dollars since 2008? Two million dollars? A couple million? <laughs> how about over 40 million U.S. dollars? And border security is an important part of that partnership. Safe and secure borders must be a regional priority because crime and transnational criminal threats know no borders. Just as we are focused on protecting our borders in the United States, securing Belize's borders from threats is equally critical to the creation of safer streets and more resilient communities in Belize. Part of that money goes to training, which in this case is multi-sectoral and multinational. Two local instructors are Ronald Sanchez of the Customs Department and Police Inspector Cesar Franco of the Mobile Interdiction Unit. The training is basically to um, help identify the commodities and do our part in interdicting. Our laws in Belize is not as such to um, stop the goods, but we can do our part to forward information to the countries that we are, um, that are expecting these goods. Like Mr. Griffith mentioned, we are strategically lo located between North and, Central, North and South America, so we are at a transiting, transiting point for goods to move from other countries through Belize to, other, to the destination. So we have to do our part in informing other countries as to what is moving from here onwards. This equipment 
will definitely enhance our, our capabilities, especially with this police department. Um, we, like the controller have said, maybe the incident haven't occurred, but we, we are of the opinion that it may be happening on our roads or highways. And mobile interdiction team, this is what we do. We do our VCPs, our vehicle checkpoints. And we believe that this device will not only help um, enhance our capabilities, but also safety on the highways if we ever come across these, these radiation sources. Aaron Humes reporting for News 5.